Hello engineers, hello electricians. You see these things here and these things here, two contactors, two overload relays. I'm gonna go over in this video how they're wired and how they work and things to be aware of when wiring them in an actual real world control panel. So this isn't just testing things on a bench, this is actually a real world project in a real, as you can see, a real world control panel. So if you don't know me, my name's Chris. I've worked in the industry for 20 years across all the sectors of controls and automation. And now what we do is we help electricians and engineers get into the industry in under eight weeks and ultimately triple their salaries when they go self-employed. So let's jump in. Okay guys, so onto wiring the contactors and overloads. And this is a bit of a tricky one to talk through in detail um, from just this overview. But as you can see, starting off with the neutrals and the supplies from, from the uh, MCBs. And these are going through the contactors. Then the overloads are connected to the contactors and then they will then come out the end of the overload and then go off to the terminal blocks to run pumps, fans, motors, whatever it might be, pumps in, the, in this case. And yeah, you can just see with the neutral, I'm just distributing it, going in here, double ferrule out to the next one. And it's important with these uh, overloads that the full load current goes through all of the terminals on the overload so if it's three if it's single phase you've got to loop it back round so it goes through all three phases which will enable it to trip correctly this bit I'm just wiring out of one side of the normally closed contact into A1. So that's how you correctly wire an overload relay. It needs to go through the normally closed contact of the overload into the coil A1 terminal of the contactor. So if that trips out, it then cuts out the power going to the coil energizing the contactor. That's really important that you understand that because I've seen many times people wiring them incorrectly and it can cause major issues, pumps overloading, overheating, potential fires, etc. So it's important you know how to wire these correctly. And then on the normally open side of the contact on the overload, that will then be going to a relay, energizing that relay. And then we've got two pole relays. So one will be going off to a light to say that it's tripped. And the other side will be going to the PLC to let us know remotely that it's tripped. Or we can program anything else we want off the back of that input. So yeah, quick overview from this image. So like I said, you've got the single phase coming in on L2, going out and then back around into L1. You've got neutral just on L3. This isn't wired yet because it's going off to the terminal blocks. That's something we do later. So that would then be coming out of T1, off to the terminal block, and then similar with the neutral, out of T3, off to the terminal block. So that's the power going to the pump. We've got our normally closed contacts here. So we'd have a supply of, in this case, 24 volts AC. I've not done that yet because that's coming from the door. That'll be coming in here, normally closed, out on 96. Cable 177, which you can see loops around to here, A1. So when that's in a good condition, that's closed. Things haven't tripped, everything's healthy. Power can pass through that and into A1, energizing this contact. And this is obviously going to zero volts on A2. If that trips out, if it overloads, depending on what we've got it set to here on this dial, that then opens, that goes open circuit, which cuts the power to this contactor, which in turn cuts the power, or the power stays here, but it cuts the power on this other side, going off to those terminal blocks and off to the pump in the field. And then on the normally open contacts here, which are normally open in a healthy condition, when that does trip, they will then close and then that will be going off to our relay, which will energize, and then we can have various things happening off that relay. In this case, we've got it energizing a light on the front of the panel for a visual representation, and then also with a different voltage going into the PLC to let us know and send a push notification, an email, a text message, or we can just program something off the back of that input telling us that this pump has tripped out. 